Yo! Yo! What up, dude? What up, dude? So, we're back. Episode 14 of the Stay Real Podcast. And anybody who's listening, thank you. And if you're not, you really should. But we're having fun, so we don't care. (laughs) So we hope you're enjoying it. I think it's fun. But, Tom, how are you? Doing good. It's officially Typo October. Yeah. October Uh, Rust in full effect. Yes, sir. So that's going to be some of the theme of... uh, of today so as always we're gonna have this week in, in uh bullshit we got a couple good ones we even got bro i got a follow-up of an old story from a i think it might have been the original one we did the first oh ever. that's awesome yeah can't wait that's um, news to me yeah that, see I, I hold some stuff back from uh tom he doesn't know everything and then it's all natural we, reaction. It's yeah, a reaction you. video. It's like ripped condoms. It's for your pleasure. So we hope you enjoy it. Um, so you should have a still shot of every reaction video of me just going. You know how they do that all over YouTube? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like oh, reaction yeah. video. And they're always like. <gasps> yeah, it's over. always overblown. And it's not like it's one thing if like you pulled it from the from the video. It's usually not that. They post for it. They made oh, that course. face yeah, yeah. for it. Yeah. So it's like, whatever. But then, next, it, we actually are bringing, finally, back from, it's been a couple episodes, we're going to have Tobin's Retro Guy. With the, oh, sure. With Mike and Tom's top five horror movies of all time for them. So it's two separate lists. One for me, one for Tom. And then we're going to have, as usual, we'll wrap it up with more of a serious moment with some get real. And we're going to talk about, I'm not going to say what the word is because I don't want to get in trouble on YouTube. But it's a C word. Let's not talk about it yet. Reaction video. You'll have to wait to the end for that. But you know what we start with, everybody. It's been another week. It's October. Lay it's it on me. It's this week in bullshit. Man, this is some more bullshit. Now here's the news. All right, so <laughs> our first our first story is all right. Before I bring it up, do you remember the guy that paid twelve thousand whatever the currency there is to be a dog? Oh yeah, okay, I remember that. All right, well he's back. He, ladies and gentlemen, he's back in the news. Okay, because he shit in the park. Says cruel dogs won't play with them. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, there's a lot of mean dogs at the dog park where he goes, and they won't play with him. Now, I'm not a veterinarian. Okay, I am not a doctor. I'm not an MD. All right, but if I was a, a betting man. And I was a dog, and I saw that monstrosity coming towards me. I wouldn't play with him either. But to each his own. Yeah. (laughs) And not to mention, unless he's spraying, like, dog on himself every day, he's still going to smell. So a dog smelling a human and seeing a dog. So they're like, what the hell is going on? So I don't blame the dogs. They're all about scent. I'm not knocking the guy. Do what you want with your money and your time and your life and your body. You do you. What I'm saying is the dog is probably like, what the fuck is this? So I thought I just thought that was funny, dude, when I saw it. So yeah, he'd be what whatever a waste, this what a colossal waste of money. 
Is that euros? What is that? Euros? Yeah, I think that's probably that's either pounds or euros, right? Yeah, and I think it might be euros. I know. Comment below if you know what that is. Um, Taco San. <laughs> that was his name, Taco San. Taco San sounds like he should have been a Chihuahua, right? It's National like he, Taco Day, Taco San. He should never live in the desert, dude. Do you understand how hot? It must get in there, dude. I mean, your body just gives off. He even like, and then sweating too. He must be so oh, good for hours of being in there. I mean, I, I, you know, maybe it's fitted for him or whatever. You know, I'll give him that. It's fitted for him, great. But anybody, maybe that's why the other dogs won't play with him because he smells like fucking ball sack and ass. Oh, dude, human then they probably want to play with him. Dogs love human ass. You ever see dogs sniffing fucking? You bend over to like whoopsie, right in your fucking pie hole, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right in there, dude. Shut your pie hole. So yeah, dude. I I don't know. I thought that was funny, man. That that was uh. That he's still in the news, man. Now, what I a found this. Wacko. I don't know if you ever saw this movie. Did you ever see the Human Centipede, the first one? I actually never saw that. Do you know the premise of the Human Centipede? I do. Yeah, yeah. Connecting the uh, mucosa of the uh, everyone's Should digestive he, he tract. Didn't, he didn't technically uh, ass to technically. ass to mouth. ATM. ATM. Usually a desirable characteristic, but not in that movie. So apparently. The director took home some disgusting prop from it. Now, I didn't read it. I didn't read what it was yet. Because I wanted to be surprised, too, what the prop was. Because sometimes, you know, <laughs> every now and then you yeah. get pulled in by, like, a title or something. And then it winds up being, are you serious, dude? I just wasted a bunch of time and there's nothing. It's a nothing <laughs> burger. <laughs> so let's see what it is. Yes, we know about it's that. Five foot nothing, a hundred and nothing. So what was it? That's the director? Yeah. That's basically the guy you're like, tell your kids not to talk to at the park. Right. He's usually got his cock hanging out and underneath his fucking trench coat. That, that would the be like, perv. That's like the evil version of Johnny Depp. <laughs> Yeah, he's Merv the Perv. Hey, Merv the Perv. <laughs> <laughs> Again, nothing Ral against Duke. this guy. I don't know nothing about him. Ral Duke meet Ral Puke. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know if you're going to steal anything from a movie set. Oh, a pair of testicles. Well, he stole a pair of testicles. Fantastic. I just What? Wasted. He stole a pair of testicles. I guess fake ones. Wow, is he hanging them from the hitch of his pickup truck? Right there. He pilfered a pair of prop human testicles from the set of human set to P3. I, excuse me. It was the third one. Dude, you see Oh, contraire, mon frere. Yeah, see, that's not okay. I was, I was pulled in. I wanted a prop from the first one. See how they get you, dude, with those titles? Now, speaking of titles, I really hope this one doesn't disappoint. Let me just go ahead and uh, throw this one up there for you. There you go. Woman reveals she had to clean her boyfriend's manhood every week to clear 20 years of buildup. Now, wow. I asked you, as a what man. What buildup are we talking about? I, that's my first question. Whatever it is, if it came from outside or inside your body, doesn't matter. You got to wash that shit away daily. You got to put some kind of some kind of bacterial killing shit down there every now and then. You gotta you kill that shit. Products. Yeah, you gotta buy them products. So you gotta put them in. Man, I don't know, dude. Listen, after 24 hours, especially if I worked out or sweating and it was back in when I was living oh in Jersey. Oh my god, forget about it. You yeah. gotta wash down there. You gotta wash it, like crimp it, prime it, everything. You wanna treat it yeah, right. I swell I sweat like a whore in church, so I, I mean, I, yeah. it's got to be mandatory shower a day. 
You and me both, dude. You and me both. But I'm going to tell you something. Since I stopped the caffeine, I don't I don't get those. I was getting almost like hot flashes. I know we're getting off on the tangent. Sorry, everybody. But I would almost get hot flashes where I would get hot and sweaty for no reason. And I haven't gotten that. It's like gone. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And I started. It's 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 really interesting with getting off caffeine has done. And again, I'm a case where I was taking, I was drinking a lot of it. So, you know, take what you will from the the effects that it's having on me. But I still think thermo, you know, besides thermogenic effect. Yeah. Well, they people only like looking at the good stuff. Wait a minute. What's what segment are we in, bro? Are we in get real right now? Are we in this week in bullshit? Because none of that was bullshit. None get of that was bullshit. bullshit. All right, so I need to know see. what this buildup is. What is this buildup? Yes. What are you fucking nut? What are, what are you fucking jack off in his fucking jack off in his boxers for fucking twenty years and just never take a shower? Like, what is this? What's all these secrets? What's with all these secrets? Yo, Ricky Ricardo, what the fuck? There are s- certain parts of relationship. Blah blah. blah, 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 blah. Yes, apparently the last task was done by a very dedicated caring woman. She was. It's Australia. Wow. She went on a radio show. Do you want to hear what she says? I got to hear. Oh, dick cheese. Absolutely got to hear this. All right, wait, let me. I had to clean my partner's penis for three years. Excuse me? What do you mean? (laughs) What do you mean? Give us more detail, please. Like the foreskin on his penis didn't come back all of the way. We'd gone to a doctor and everything and they couldn't really. Oh, dude, it had fucking crust on it, bro. So the hood oh, was back, no. but there was all shit stuff in the, the gears, and it couldn't go back. <laughs> the fucking Grim Reaper hood. Uh, uh. Dude, dude, imagine like, oh, I don't understand. I don't understand why I can't, my, my foreskin won't go back over. I mean, there's this ring, six-inch ring of crust and shit all around it, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. I don't think that has anything to do with it at all. I bet if he pulled that shit back, too, it would fucking, like, probably rip the skin. It'd probably start bleeding. The skin's probably all friable from the buildup of bacteria. It's terrible. They should pull in, uh, like, like when when they found E.T., they should call in a group of scientists to quarter him off and test that. Because it's probably the next thing that's going to kill us all coming from this guy's foreskin, bro. I'm or the next down. cure. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you or right one now. One or the other. If the cure for something is some guy's foreskin, foreskin cheese, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going well, I mean, out if they recreate it in a lab, who knows? Maybe it's some, like, maybe they could create, like, you know, like the way they use snake venom to create anti-venom. So it'll be anti cheese, anti dick cheese. Yeah, it'll be anti snake juice, <laughs> fucking hooded snake juice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh man, we're off the rails today, dude. I don't know, man. October. It's our. We're in birthday month for both of us, so that must be what it is. Let me yeah. let me grab. Oh, dude, this okay. one was wild, dude. This one was on CBS News. I found. So wait, I don't. I don't want you to miss a second of this because it's insane. I'm not going to play audio or anything. You don't need it. So there's a bunch of, of birds, like a whole school with a flock. I'm sorry, of birds. I'm going to in the ocean, a school, a flock of birds, <laughs> and they're flying. Flock of seagulls. You know what, dude? I ran so far away. But a boom. <laughs> so these birds were like, you see the big group of black come. And then they disappear. And then all of a sudden, bro, they plummet to the fucking ground, bro, full speed. Full speed. And there's some of them on the ground no. like this. Some of them are just dead like they broke their necks. Most of them get away. What but you see, And nobody can figure out, apparently, what the hell happened. Watch this shit, dude. I'm going to keep it small. Their GPS sent them in the wrong whatever. direction. You got to see this, dude. This is amazing, man. Was it the horror movie, The Birds, Mudderfuck? Look at those birds, dude. Look how many got knocked. You see them flapping? I still see the girl. I, I don't know. Did you did you call it up Look on the right screen? Look right here. Look at this bird flapping. He's dying. 
Right I still there. see the girl from the foreskin cheese. You know why? Because I never switched over. <laughs> That's why. It's the birds. The birds. It's for the birds. <laughs> you, you don't know that her name was all Bird? I, you didn't know that, bro? All I see is... I only see some bitch in a soccer jersey over here. <laughs> you didn't know this her bird. name was Bird? And she dove? All I see is this fucking bird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're all back. I see is an Australian bird. <laughs> An Australian bed. All right. Here we go. Do Watch it. Watch this. You see the birds up in the corner? Watch this. Oh! <laughs> you see it, dude? Dude, they flew. Now watch. Oh, right shit. Here. Look at these birds here. He's flapping. He's done. They didn't make... They're not going to make... And these are done. They died on impact. Yo, there's one laying on a fucking roof. He, he fucking right ate the roof. Yeah. He got fucked. There's one down here. There's a couple that stood up, but they're still like, where the fuck am I? Well, Those guys just like back. got. Yeah, yeah. They woke up from a knockout and they're like, all right, I got to get the fuck out of here. And I don't think wow, they realized. That was crazy. Do you know what this says? Galerita aparecen cientos de aves muertos en rubio. <laughs> what? I don't know. This is when do we become? Since when do we become Telemundo? <laughs> you didn't know we started. A, we're so popular right now that we have a spinoff channel, the Stay Real Podcast in Espanol. You didn't know, bro? Do I look like ESPN Deportes? <laughs> Lock drop mystery. Security camera in Chihuahua, Mexico captured the moment when a hundred yellow headed blackbirds suddenly fell from the sky. Many nose diving to their deaths. So this was on Twitter. They got fucked. Dude, they got beyond that. They dead. They done. Like yeah, that Australian bird. They were a bunch of fucking dumb birds. Now, I have a question for you. You are in New Jersey, correct, my friend? Unfortunately, yeah. Did you hear, and I, and I don't know, I didn't read it, that somewhere in the New Jersey woods, they found hundreds of pounds of cooked pasta dumped in the woods? No, I didn't. You didn't know this. Now you're going to know. So apparently. Is that is that where they buried Paulie Walnuts? Look at all this pasta, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> like, that's Where's a the lot. Where's the That's, I mean, look at it compared to the trees and stuff. That's not just a little bit. They made it bigger. Like, almost like when you have to compare Bigfoot in those pictures. If you look. It's it's a lot of pasta, dude. Somewhere underneath there, there's a dead mobster. Yo, Tone! Yo, Tone! Hello, hello, Tone! You there? <laughs> He's a fucking so, interior decorator. He's a fucking Czech Czechoslovakian. Dude, look at that, Holy dude. shit! My gosh, man. My own. Manager San Antonio, what a waste. Look, they what called the it Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to Mission Impossible. <laughs> you know it, man. Holy the superior fuck, man, but of the two, in my opinion, but. Where's the fucking marinara? We should send the perpetrators to the state pen. Pen a tenure. <laughs> <laughs> the pen a The lead subject is a guy named Al Dente. Al Dente. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then he knows this guy that I... This guy from Loda. His name is Sal Monella. Monella. He works with Al Dente. Yeah. Al Dente and my buddy Sal Monella from Loda. Yeah, yeah, that fucking guy. 
Now, dude, we both have tattoos. We're going to start wrapping this up. We both have tattoos. And, and I love tattoos on a woman. No problem with tattoos on a woman. I don't really care. But Cat I Von just, D. Oh, still my beating heart. Yes, but I don't know. I think some women, when, it, when they do too much on their face and they cover their entire body, to me, I don't know. I think it's too much after a while. I mean, again, do you, do you. I'm just saying, personally. Because look at this before. Um, look at these two pictures, dude. This is the same girl. She's still amazing Britain's looking. Britain's most woman. tattooed. She's fucking gorgeous, though. Yeah. I mean, her face tattoos, I, I don't mind it that much because you can still see. But How long before she fills in? Long. How long? It's a touch. It's a touch much. If she does any more than that, I'd be like, dude, you're a fucking moron. There she is. Again, oh, beautiful she's woman. Go she's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are contacts, though. I, I, I bet you. Yeah, fucking contacts. They're so stupid. Yeah, but see, eyes are eyes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no matter what color they are, they're fucking. You either got nice eyes or you don't. That was her before. Yeah, I don't really. I'm not really digging the um, the Eurythmics Pink. hairstyle, but Pink. I like I like the color of her hair. I didn't like the short, you know, Annie Lennox look. Yeah. <laughs> but man, she's fucking she's fucking cute though. Good lord, what a beautiful girl. Yeah. All right, we if got she one does more. any more, if she does any more, she's going to encroach on really pretty territory. She's got to pump agree. the fucking brakes. Pump up the brakes. Pump them up. Why your face is pumping? All right. Here we go. Last one. Let's go, Let's Technotronic. Go. Nice. Nicely done. People terrified after pilot shows how close planes fly to each other. All right, let's see how close they are. When you travel by plane and think the sky is so big that you're alone up there. But you're actually almost always flying so, so close to other planes. That's like... That's not too yeah. bad. That's not too bad. I thought they were talking about like when you see those fighters near, fighting in uh, like a near World War II. A near miss. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, near misses are fucking scary, bro. You know what? I'm a little disappointed. There's a couple stories. I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, this uh, this fine day, I was not happy with those stories. I'm gonna have to be honest with everyone. But I'm I mean, very the excited. Pasta thing is, the pasta thing is weird. And the birds I saw the New Jersey dope. thing. I was like, dude, I gotta, I gotta show you. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I mean, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get, Gina? We really need, I don't know if anybody knows who that is, but at some point, we really need to do an episode. He's a on guy that. who eats a lot of pasta. Well, uh, <laughs> he drinks a lot of coke. He doesn't sniff. He drinks a lot of diet coke. A ton of it. He drinks a ton of it. A ton of it. A ton. A ton. A metric ton. A metric fucking ton. And that was this week in bullshit. All right, so me and Tom thought it'd be fun for the month of October that we would give each of our top five horror movies of all time that meant a lot, whatever. Whatever our reason was for choosing the order in the movies, we'll, we'll, we'll tell a little bit about so everybody can understand. But that's where we're going to go with. Finally, back after a couple weeks from the crypt, Tobin's Rich. <laughs> Play 
All right, everybody. So I want my brother to go first. So we're going to go with Tom's list first. All right. So again, I'm hoping I got the list right. Tom had a lot of second thoughts at the very end before we came on to, uh, to a uh, podcast, but I, I, I switched out one thing and I kept the order the same as it originally was. So I hope this is it. So we're going to go with five to one, five being the worst one being the best. Again, not, it's just the worst one of the list. It's not the worst movie. It's still our top five favorites, but it definitely goes in, yeah. in a descending order. All right. So Tom's first movie. I think you all know it. Nightmare on Elm Street. Tom, oh. why, why was this number five on your list? Well, I wouldn't say it was necessarily scary, but it was for the time. It was a really new concept. Um, guy kills you in your dreams, die in real life. Pretty fucking cool. And most of all, for me, being a fucking clown asshole that I am, I mean, Freddie was fucking hilarious. Freddie was funny. He was just, he was the equivalent of Arnold with the one-liners, you know, like uh -huh, putting uh -huh. a machete in your stomach and going, hey, stick around. But instead he's like, oh, what a rush. And then he fucking injects the girl with all these mini syringes and she dies. Yeah. Like, he always had right. creative ways of killing you and having a one-liner to go with it, which is pretty fucking cool. It sucks that he was yeah. like this pedophile piece of shit you know, scumbag, of course, uh, you know, of the course. real story behind him, which is why they burned him to death, which I thought was pretty cool too. Cause then they tie, you know, like the sins of the parents and he's coming back to avenge himself, but he can right. only kill you in your dreams, which is pretty yeah, cool. Dude, so he was I thought a that was, it was but pretty how fun. many people had their kids dressed up like Freddie or Jason or any of those guys back all, in the, all the time. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, I, 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 the thing is Freddie, the, this, the, this is the thing between when, between it comes to like, I love the st I like the story of Halloween. I like the story of Jason Voorhees and you know what I mean? But as well, you know, uh, Michael Myers, right? So it's like, but the thing is they didn't have personality. Like, yes, you know, Freddie had I personality. And I, I love that. I love that about it. But that's why it's number five, because it's not necessarily scary. And let's not forget, bro, we cannot forget Ralph Duke's first movie. This was the first movie when I was a young actor. My name yeah. is Johnny Depp. First movie ever. Yes. Yes. That's pretty fucking legendary when you consider yeah, you know, Johnny's the fucking man. Can I bring way you before up before his favorite? Amber way before the Amber Turd trial, Johnny Depp was always the fucking yeah. man. All right, let's get it fucking straight. Everybody loved him and then, you know, they didn't anymore. But here's one of my well, favorite scenes. Again. Here's one of my favorite scenes. Oh shit. Now, how's he say? Doesn't he say you want to do a little tongue or you want a little tongue? Yeah, yeah, you want some tongue. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he always had a line, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, see, man. but I mean, this is early 80s, wasn't it? It had to be early yeah. 80s. This wasn't yeah. the 70s. This was early 80s. Yeah. So for the time, I mean, it was pretty, pretty good, pretty good effects, I'd say. Still, yeah. still a little, still a little behind it's behind the times in terms of. Yeah, Someone but it was a magical time, like, dude. But, it was a magical time. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, from horror movie, the eighties and into the nineties a little bit was was amazing. Yeah. It really was. And I love this yes, movie. That's why too, it's number five. And I love this movie too. It's funny enough, it's not on my list at all. But I did love this movie a lot. And it it freaked me now, out as what well. What did you think of the what did you think of the remake? I watched it. I did not like with uh Roar really with Rorschach as him, the guy who played Rorschach and Watchmen. The that guy was great, Jackie Earl Haley. I liked it a lot though. The bad I news really Freddie? The bad news Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> I did, yeah, no, I, did, I, I liked it because they showed them when they burned them, and you know, like they they really got into like the backstory of Freddy. They and made it, it was a too, lot more scary, less less funny. They made it too real. I liked the Freddy mm. that was like you said, the jokester. If I wanted yeah, a horror yeah. movie of a guy being burned, call it something else. That's not yeah, Freddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't like it that much. I, I the, the real. I like this. Play- I definitely like the spin on it. I, I was in, I was impressed by it. I was impressed enough to burn it onto DVD. So I'm always up but, for a spin. You know what I'm saying? Like a 30 year old woman in the middle of the day, I'm up for a spin. Yeah. I'm, and I mean like a spin class. I didn't mean anything else. Just in a case. Spin cycle. But hey, go hey, get hey, yourself a spin cycle. From what I hear, if you sit on a washer in the spin cycle, it, it could be beneficial. That's what I hear. Yeah. You don't so need a man. I don't know. That was the, early, so, the earliest vibrator. It's whatever, whatever you know, as they, I would say to a man, whatever tickles your pickle, you know, you, uh, you do <laughs> it. You do it. All right. Number four, sir, is a classic in my opinion as well. Not on my list, but a very good movie. Hold it, guys. Number four. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, I mean, the story behind the making of this movie is scary enough on its own. Everything that fucking happened on the set. The movie was fucking cursed. Carol Ann was fucking cursed. The poor girl, Heather O'Rourke, wasn't it? Heather O'Rourke? Yeah. Yes. Heather Rourke or Heather O'Rourke? I I thought Um, it was O'Rourke. I thought it was O. I think it was O. Rourke. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, it's just they, they, they were fucking. That this movie freaked me the fuck out. For the longest time, you couldn't look at a fucking TV in the eighties with that, you know, black and white, sh- white noise without being like, oh my god, I think I hear Carol Ann. You know what I mean? And then you would that hear shit, fuck they're TVs. here. Yeah, they're here. Hear. The fucking toys are fucking possessed. The tree swallows little her brother Robbie. The fucking, you know, the chairs moving. The fucking, you know, it was just. Tangina, uh, one of the unheard. Wonderful, one of the wonderful actresses from the from early uh, 80s, 90s, at least from I would know her. Maybe she was acting before that, but she was in so many good movies. I don't think people realize how many movies Tangina yeah. was in. And comedies yeah, too. Was, she did comedies, horror. She did a lot. Yeah, yeah. She definitely was. Uh, she'll. She, I don't know if she'll ever be remembered for anything but Tangina, though. She was. Oh, she dude, was the I'll, savior. She came in and helped them. Like they were like they were I'll, fucked. Like they were so fucked. I'll always remember her from the. Uh, what was the name of that? Was it the worst witch? The worst witch. What? Mildred Hubble, the disaster no. area. Yeah, no, that's the worst witch. I, I'm not talking about that one. What was it? Darn, what, it was something witch. I'm having such a brain fart right Teen now. witch? Teen witch. Teen witch. Thank, yes, thank you, because they tried to build on Teen Wolf. It came out after Teen yeah, Wolf. My, yeah. That was, uh, that was top that. Top that. Top that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah talk about some tobin's retro guide shit but back to poltergeist yeah the tree swallows the brother you're telling me i didn't even know that they were they used real skeletons yeah in the pool that's that's a known like fact. dude what the yeah. fuck were you thinking bro yeah what is this santeria yeah. what were you thinking hey you want no, realism bad, bad karma you go with it you bad go juju with it. bro no that's bad juju bro you don't do that you don't dig up the dead nah you don't do that not I good agree. Not a not a wise career decision. So then somebody good. died on the set. One of the one yeah. of the camera guys fucking got electrocuted. Died. The sister, the older sister, she died. Uh, the, the actress you, beaten by her boyfriend. You said, yeah, her boyfriend beat the crap out of her. Yeah, that was. I remember that story vaguely, but I remember that was fucked. That was a fucked up story. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Was crazy. Abusive, She's in this movie. This movie was. This movie was huge too, man. Like, oh my god, Joe Beth Williams, Craig T. Nelson. Like, yeah this this movie was this movie was fucking crazy. Like, you thinking of the supernatural and shit, it took it to another level. Yeah, it scared the crap out of me, but I kind of waded through it just so I could see her in those underwear and that little shirt <laughs> growing up. Who Joe? Who Joe Beth? When, when she's on the when she's on the ceiling and everything, and like her. Oh yeah, underwear. Joe Beth was. Joe Beth was smoking back in those days. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And they were sitting there. And I, I, I think, and I think everybody would do a disservice to themselves if they don't see part two, which was 
equally oh, as fucking creepy, but it's not as revolutionary as this. Like I, th I feel like similar to you know uh, Nightmare, this changed the game in a lot of ways. This 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 made a big dent in the culture. Everybody was that ever saw this never forgot this movie. But part two was fucking fucked too, and part you three was kind of funny, but it was weird because she was dying. The kid was Carol Ann, died, Heather, Heather finished, was dying. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the crow. Like it just got that eerie fucking curse around it, which right. is it's just fucked. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, Poltergeist had to be on that list, absolutely for me. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely, it's yeah. uh, it, it it's a good movie, dude. It flipped me out, dude, without a doubt. When I was oh yeah, there. and again, I, I if you haven't heard earlier episodes, I watched horror movies from a young age because my father watched them, and if I wanted to chill with him, he wasn't changing what he was watching. So I watched it with him. <laughs> so um, I got kind of desensitized yeah. to that stuff. So that stuff doesn't really scare me. Reality scares me more than these movies do. But um, yeah, and that's not to say anybody can have a jump scare. I mean, anybody that could happen, to anybody. But then none of them. I'm not scared. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but even back in the day, it flipped me out this this movie a little bit, just because it. Those skeletons did look real. To be honest with you, they looked real. Yeah. And to know they're like under your house, and like you're not safe. And not, like, not to mention that the fear of the unknown sometimes is scarier than anything because you just don't know. Right. You know, like right. the fucking spirit world. We don't really know, but everyone has their stories and everyone has their occurrences and things that happen to them over life. Where you're like, bro. Eh. This ain't it. This ain't the end of it. Because there's some shit that's happened in my life. And a lot of people's where you're just like, nah, man, that's kind of, that's just not coincidence. I think next week we there's should tell some, shit. some uh, ghost stories, personals, personal stuff. I oh, have yeah, I, could, I got, I got, yeah, no doubt. All right. Next week, everybody stay tuned. We're going to have story time with Mother Goods and it's going to be personal experiences with spooky crap. So stay tuned next week, but let's move on to the next one, my friend. Yeah. Oh, but you know what? I didn't show you this picture. How did we not talk about this motherfucker who was in my nightmares? Maybe you mentioned it. I didn't hear it. But this motherfucker was in my nightmares. That clown. Oh, yeah. Thing. I was I was going to I was going to say the clown. Yeah. The possessed clown. Yeah. Dude, oh, that, she was such a that, cutie. What a yeah. cute, beautiful little girl she was. Yeah. It's a shame. What a shame. It is a, a shame. It's something shame. that's easily preventable and they just didn't catch it. I'm fucking real. Yeah, that clown fucking... Did the clown attack Robbie, too? Yeah, remember went around his neck? It ta attacked Robbie, yeah, her brother, yeah. 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 So yeah, that, that night... fucking scary. That flipped me out. But we're moving to number three, yeah. which was a last-minute throw-in by Tom. It was like a Hail Mary before we came on. That has it's to be on there. Alien. Oh, so this was a point of contention for me. We had to talk about it because I'm like, is it sci-fi? Is it horror? But, I mean, Geiger's fucking creature, let's be real. It's one of the most terrifying, freakish fucking things you have ever, and any human mind could conceive of. The alien was groundbreaking. Uh, the face suckers. It was just the whole concept and the artwork, I mean, you know, because Geiger was an artist more than anything, right? Yes. And that, like, that, that was, was just, thing, yeah. A, yeah, it's just the construction of it. Very, you know, look almost like the Nautilus shape, like the, the head, the way it was almost like, uh, you know, like almost like part serpent and like, it you just didn't know what organic, the mouth like, coming out of the mouth. Yeah. yeah it was just and it fucking phenomenal. It up, yeah, dude, it was amazing. I mean, look at and this. And then incub incubating in a human. Look at incub that. Oh, that. Dude, what the fuck did you see? And, this was 1979. What the fuck did we see at that time that was anything like that? Nothing. Nothing, bro. Like, unless you're talking like Star Wars, right? Because Star Wars also groundbreaking in the 70s. Amazing camera work, photography, you know, uh, uh, makeup level, and, and costumes. That, but that nothing was, was as amazing. terrifying. This motherfucker was scary as shit. Yeah, oh, my God. Scary as shit. Yeah. You know so, and the blood, up, acid, like... The perfect creature, the perfect monster. You know what's fucked up, bro, is I had, I don't know if you remember this, maybe it was a little before, I mean, we're two years apart, you should remember this, it was an alien uh. toy, this big, it was big, dude, 
it was an alien toy, and you pressed on the head, and the mouth came out. It and it came huge. out of its mouth. <laughs> yeah, it was big. Nah, dude. I never it, saw it, that. It, it was probably a three foot, around three foot tall toy, dude. It was big, and it had a long tail. Damn. And you could take like it had a covering, and you could take the covering off and look at the inside of it, dude. If I would have kept that toy now, and it was in mint condition. Thousands and thousands of dollars it'd be worth. Oh yeah, forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. But that just yeah, it was, the, it was the perfect. It was the perfect creature, bro. The perfect monster. Like yeah, it was like unstoppable. Yeah, it's it's blood is acid, so even you know shooting the thing it, it doesn't help because then it just bleeds on you and it burns through everything. So it's very insect. Burn through your armor. You know, like insect. Yeah. Like, an insect. like you're gonna get. Yeah, this get thing overrun. was pretty fucking. This thing was pretty fucking terrifying. And not to mention the way they made the movie as well. Like, wasn't that Ridley Scott, correct? Yeah. Ridley Scott, the fucking, you know, gladiator. Come on, dude. From fucking Ridley yeah, Scott is like all yeah, time. Dude. His brother made one of my favorite movies of all time. Tony Scott, uh, God rest his soul. He, uh, he made True Romance. But that was his tour de force. But Ridley, this was just nobody... Nobody knew what to think when you saw this fucking movie, except that you were fucking freaked out. Like, you felt like if you saw something yeah. scary on the floor, it was a face sucker going to jump on yeah, your fucking face. Dude. Yeah, And impregnate yeah. your body with the fucking yeah. babies of this fucking dude. thing. So, it's yeah, like, it was just... Look, that thing goes on your face? Where's the eggs going, dude? Where, it's going down right your Right down mother. your throat. So you got that big fucking face hugger cock Ugh. right down your throat, dude. Laying eggs like... Down fucking. your throat. Laying eggs like freaking, like uh, like when those pumps in the fucking uh, uh, oil, the oil pumps. Yeah. Just pumping them eggs and hoping one just hatches and eats the other ones. Who yeah, knows? And you, and you know, and the thing is, when it hatches, it's busting right through your rib cage. I mean, you're done. At a certain that shit point, is once fucking it's rough, it. man. Yeah, it is. Because you're still kind of alive. Like it's just like. It's just the most fucking craziest thing. Like it, it really is groundbreaking, groundbreaking and legendary. Yeah. So we can go to the next one. All right. Number two. I don't know. What and else one of my faves too. One. one of my faves too, but not top five for me either. And it's kind of cool. Cause I don't have the same as uh, Tom does is Hellraiser. Yeah, dude. So for the time I, I we didn't look up the year on this, but I could quit, but again. Hellraiser. Was so Hellraiser, yeah. So the the makeup of everything, Uncle Frank coming back to uh, the flesh, you the know, no growing skin? back oh, into a the human. No skin, bro, the no skin. As he's as he's just coming, like the flesh is growing onto his bones. You know, like, that really was like monumental. Real quick, I just talking what? about that before you move on. I don't, don't say like the guy the way... eating the bugs at the end. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't like the way certain clothes feel on my body. Okay, I don't like it. Yeah. Certain clothes don't feel good on me, and all I think about is how it feels on me. Now, most things I don't, but there's certain materials and stuff I'm like, I just, I don't like it. I'm fine with most, yeah. so, the way shirts are now, they're all soft and wonderful. But back in the 80s and 90s, shirts were miserable. Now they figured it out where, like, we want nice and soft. It doesn't wrinkle yeah. really, whatever. So, when he's still got no fucking skin on, that motherfucker's like, I'm going to dress for success and puts a fucking shirt on. Yeah. It up, I remember. Like, oh my God. And he's I'm bleeding. Like, oh. He's fucking, no. he's bleeding through it, right? Wasn't yes. he bleeding through it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, I'm like, imagine that touching your raw muscle, like putting a shirt on. And I was just like, oh, dude, that flipped me out. That flipped me out. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't want to pass that up. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. So Uncle Frank, I, I, he was a fucking scumbag, but it was amazing. Like, I, I can't remember what it was, but I, I remember reading up on it back in the day. Because, like, I was mostly intrigued by Doug Bradley, right? Wasn't that him? The pinhead? Yeah. Doug Bradley? Yeah. So I felt like he was, I loved his voice. He was so metal. He's like, we'll rip your soul apart. Like, yeah, that yes. fucking bit. He had a little bit of British accent. So it was yes. like he was so fucking he was so evil and scary, yeah. but like I kind of liked him. Like fucking Pinhead was like my dude, so yeah. I liked him, and uh, I liked that. You know they get Frank at the end. You know they get that motherfucker. But well, like the, the way the like the way the human body amazing. like yeah the way the human body yeah dude he was just fucking awesome. Doug Bradley was so he just commanded respect. 
Yeah, like, you know what I mean? But like uh, Frank, like his body, like, you know, reconstructing was like very anatomical and very, you know, uh, you know, human anatomy speaking, you know, anatomically speaking, it was pretty accurate. You know, you see the flesh, you see the muscle, then you see the fascia. Like it was like, holy shit. Like he started out with nerves, like right, so bones and nerve endings, which is actually very accurate. So like it was pretty interesting to see that. And the makeup was just intense. It was very intense. But, uh, yeah, I had to put Hellraiser up there because of that. I agree 100%. I think they didn't need, like, 17 yeah. of them, but I definitely thought the first couple. No, were no. The newer one, the newer one I just saw recently, and I actually liked it. I thought it was pretty good, but. They're saying that um, that's I don't like the new pin, to... I don't like the new pinhead as much as Doug Bradley. No one's going to ever touch him. For me. No, I agree 100%, but they're saying that that yeah. version is more like the book. That's what I heard. That the that new version's one. The new one, yeah. Oh, okay. And finally, at number one, the ultimate. I'm just going to bash your fucking brains in. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so this had to be number one for me for a, mon a bunch of reasons because, number one, it's one of my favorite uh, directors of all time, which is Kubrick. Full Metal Jacket, 2001. The Shining and fucking Clockwork Orange, four of the sickest, craziest movies you'll ever see. Right. And all equal, and let's not forget Eyes Wide Shut, which still creeps me the fuck out to this day. Yeah. And that's probably the most like reality than anything, which is even scarier. But I digress, not to mention Jack fucking Nicholson, bro. Come on, man. Just man right all here, time bro. fucking... The all-time fucking... <laughs> just, the best, dude. Just the best. Jack has so many great lines in it. and But it's just really like, dude, the fucking twins. The the the, the guy in the fucking... What is it? The bear suit? Is he dude, giving somebody head? With the bear suit that? on? You're just like, what the fuck was that about? And then like the twins and the blood coming out of the elevator. And it's like the way Kubrick would use lighting and colors and, and camera angles and, and just... Even in Eyes Wide Shut, he was still doing it with the way he would just follow the, with the camera. Creep me the fuck out, whether you're following Danny on his tricycle or you're fucking just sitting there watching blood come out of the fucking elevator or the, you know, like he had just a way of making a movie. It got under your fucking skin and it bothered you forever. Yeah. yeah. Like even Full Metal Jacket, bro, when you see D'Onofrio, you know, like he had that way of getting the fucking creeps out of you, man. And then like, you know, the, let's not forget. I mean, obviously Jack, Jack stole the show in that movie. You know, he was the whole thing, but you know, like going into the fucking ballroom and talking to the bartender, you know, and then like finding out that you're the caretaker. Like you're like, you've always been the caretaker. He's like Lloyd best bartender from Saskatchewan to where he's, <laughs> where he's like, yeah, yeah, I don't remember where the other places. Yeah. Yeah, and he's and then he's like he uses like a geographical thing, and he's like, but it, you know he was just like the best, you know, like he's just like. When do you think we should take Danny to a doctor? <laughs> like you know I remember, dude. Out? Like, yeah, we're fucking out with the girl in the tub. The girl in the tub. Mm. That, that, oh yeah, like, the, zom I, the zombie I was bitch. Like, oh look at this girl! Whoa! Oh yeah, she's just like. And, and then, like, like the no. way the flesh was falling off a yeah. rotting body when you the camera angle from the back, and you see like Jack's like scared face. He's walking back like, oh my fucking god! Amazing. And you just see the skin coming off her back. You're like, for for that year that they made that movie, you're like, holy fucking shit! And the craziest thing of all is like to find out that freaking uh, Stephen King didn't like that movie. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. Like, are you fucking high, bro? He liked like, the how do you not better. like that fucking movie? He liked I don't the think you could better, ever. Dude. Nah, I mean, hey, whatever. He had his vision for it, but you can't top Kubrick. Kubrick just had a way of getting under your fucking skin. Dude, even the scene when he's talking to Grady in the bathroom. And he's like, didn't you fucking kill your daughters? And like, he's just sitting there and the way Grady just looks at him and he's talking to him and you're yeah. like, so here's an interesting side note. Do you uh -oh. know what other Kubrick... What other Kubrick movie was Grady in? Oh, dude, I, that one you got me. I'll tell you right out the gate. What is it? He was Alexander DeLarge's father. 
He's the father of Alexander in Clockwork Orange. No. He's like, oh, sorry. We can't very well kick Joe out. We've given him your room. Remember, he comes out of jail. Oh, he comes out of yeah. jail and his dad's there. Yeah. Okay, now, yeah, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, that, was, he was the dad and fuck it. Kubrick yeah, yeah, was but amazing. he was just, just Kubrick was just amazing. He can make movies that just fuck with you, bro. The opening scene to to Clockwork, he just with the camera, like Alexander's sitting there all sitting there drinking, you know, the milk plus, and then it's just like the way they looked, and it's just so creepy, man. He just yeah, he he was just the master filmmaker. He was the master. But yeah, so Shining had to be up there for me just because of that. Kubrick was I, the fucking I, I can't disagree with you. I think you got a solid top yeah. five, dude, honestly. All right, now mine. Yeah, I, like, I went. I went for groundbreaking. Yeah, no, you definitely hit it. You definitely yeah. hit it. Now, I don't know how many of these you're actually going to know. To be honest with you, some of these for me. Well, you go. You go far underground with this shit. So maybe yeah. someone else will know, but I'll watch them. So I'm always up for it. Number five for me. Not necessarily the best movie in the world. Not necessarily most amazing story very amazing cast though there's a lot of people in it you're like holy crap he's in it uh but it was the first movie that made an impression on me from that time that i mentioned earlier where i was watching movies with my father i remember sitting yeah. there one time watching cable with him and a little movie known as galaxy of terror was on whoa Never now, saw it. This movie, I can't remember the story for crap. I actually want to watch it again. But I can't remember the story for crap. But there's one scene I will always remember, and I didn't get the scene because I wouldn't be able to put it up. But one of the people is walking, going somewhere, and it's all dark behind them. All of a sudden, yeah. you're looking at them and you see an alien grab them, take a nail, and just reach around and open their stomach. And you just see the fat and organs just come out. And I was like seven, five, six, seven years old. And I'll never forget wow. it. Wow. So that's why it's I had to make the top five for me because it really made an impression on me like that. I still remember it to this day. Now so was this, this an 80s movie? Was this in the 80s? Yeah, this was in the 80s. Uh, okay. Yes, very early 80s, actually. Very early 80s. So, um... How did that go over there? Oh, okay. Uh, so, here's some people... I'm going to actually throw up some pictures, which for some reason are a little messed up. And these are people. Now you're gonna laugh because of this who this person is and what you were talking about. But here's some of the cast to Galaxy of Terror. Let's see if you know who this is. Looks familiar, but I can't I can't make him out. Wait, oh my god, that's fucking Robert Englund. Yes. He was in it. Holy shit, he's so young there. Wow. Dude, it's one of his earlier movies. No shit. All right, now let's see if you know who this is. Now, this one is going to be hard for some people, and I don't know if you're going to recognize her. You have to think early 80s television. Uh, I don't know. Do you remember Happy Days? Vaguely. What about Joni Loves Chachi? Do you remember that, the spinoff? Not really. I never really watched that, no. Well, that's Joan I just know from Happy Days. That's her. She was in this horror movie. Wasn't Joni Love Shashi that was uh, Scott Bayo? Yeah, Scott Bayo and her had a spinoff. Yep. Al was in it. Okay. Yep. Now, oh, this Al one, from Happy Days? I know yeah. Al from Happy Days because I remember from uh, the Weezer video, Buddy Holly. Right. Forgot his now, name was you, Al. <laughs> you know who this is, dude. You know who this is. Oh, was that Sid? Yep. Sid was in it, too. Sid Haig. Oh, shit. Yes, sir. Captain Spaulding. 
I loved Kim as Captain Spaulding, though. Yeah, that's that's a memorable great. one. That's a memorable I one. I love Captain Spaulding, yeah. All right. My, he was my favorite character. So, yeah, so it just means a lot. I know you don't have any memories. You don't know the movie or anything, but it just it just impacted me. So I, I had to put it on there somewhere. Yeah. Number four, and I know you like this one. Number four for me is Creep Show. Hands down. Oh, you motherfucker! You took my fucking choice. Now I was I totally take... gonna. I was, I was totally gonna put that on there, but I changed my mind at the last minute. Now, if anyone can see directly behind me, I have a creep show poster on the wall, set like a movie, like you're in a movie theater, like with the metal around it. That's a creep show one on the bottom. It's this yeah, creep show was fucking awesome. So yeah, it's just like like this one. You know, one of the ones that really stuck with me, one of the stories in it was the first one with Stephen King in it. Oh, Stephen King! I love that one because I was thinking like I love think the meteor, it. the meteor, yes. and it start the green, the meteor that turns him onto the plant man. <laughs> yes, but I I was. What does he say? About, He's like you you lughead, something like that, something like that. Whatever his but, name was. He's like you you lughead. I always like the fact that, uh, like, do you ever have a real bad itching? I mean, you, we've had skin issues. And then when you go in, like, uh -huh. warm water and you sit in it, it just stops. Ugh. And yeah. it feels so fucking good. Even though you know it's going to dry it out worse when you get out, you're like, fuck that shit right now. And you're like, oh. Yeah, he goes in the bathtub and then he wakes up yeah. in the morning. He's just a big he's like, moss ball. Oh, oh, oh. He can't even, he's like talking underneath <laughs> the thing. Yeah. yeah, that one freaked me out. But all of them freaked me out. The other one that freaked me out was the roach one because I don't like bugs. I hate bugs. Oh, but yeah, the bug guy, yeah. Oh, dude, that what, one. Papa Roach? Papa Roach did me in, bro. Papa Roach did me in, dude. But each story was so unique and everyone freaked me out. Even the one with Naked Gun, Leslie Nielsen. The one where they come oh, back with the uh... buries him. I bury you. Where he buries him yeah, up yeah, in their he... heads. Yeah, because then, uh, what's his face? Uh, Ted Danson's like, I could bench 300 pounds. Remember that? Yes, I do. Because, like, Leslie Nielsen puts his foot in between the door so that he can't close the door on him. He's like, I bench 300 pounds. I'm going to crush your foot. <laughs> great, great. I, I used to laugh at that because it's like, yeah, because he's like this fucking, like, high fiver, like, fucking, you know, jock. And Leslie's yes. like, yeah, well. You know, you're banging my wife. Yeah, well, you might want to help her out right now. She's about to die. <laughs> just like you. Yeah, just a really yep. good movie. And it's like you're not stuck in a movie for too long. I like the little vignettes kind of thing, the little stories. So and wait, then, it was it was this it was the plant man, it was the roach guy, and it was Leslie Nielsen, Ted Danson, and then and what the was crate. was there another one? Was it was another the one? Crate. The crate. The crate with the monster. The monkey yeah, monster. dude. That was with Adrian Barbeau. Oh. That was my oh. dad's. My mom still to this day is so jealous because she's like of Adrian Barbeau. It's like your fucking father always loved Adrian Barbeau with their fucking tits. Showing the tits everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's still my mom's still salty. My mom's still salty about hey, Adrian Barbeau. Hey, those are Barbeau. million dollar tits, dude. I'll tell you that much. Hey, dude, man. Million dollar tits. I, I didn't I knew her from Cannibal and a uh, Cannibal Run and and this movie. That was the only movies I knew her from. Oh, dude, she was. Don't forget, dude, she was in Escape from New York. Oh, shit. come on, You're dude! Right. All right, number three. All right. Number three. Return of the Living Dead. Oh. Now, most people are going to say, "How could you compare it to Night of the Living Dead?" I'm not saying there's. It's a superior movie. I picked it because it scared the shit out of me because in Romero's version of zombies, you could kill them and yeah. off them with a headshot. In Return of the Living yeah. Dead, no matter what you did, it came back. The, if the body parts, if you cut them off, they were still moving. If you cut off a leg, it was still moving. You shoot them in the head, it was still moving. They kept coming at you. Yeah, and if you true. burned them, the smoke went up and made more. So it's like... There was no stopping uh, them once they got out. So that that's what freaked me out about that. 
Not yeah, to yeah. mention the hilarious group of fucking losers that get killed in the fucking yeah. thing. <laughs> oh my, my god. You know what my dream is? To get eaten by a bunch of old men. <laughs> dude, it's something along those lines she says, dude. She's a nut, dude. But she was great. She was a great actress back then. But yeah, I don't know. Was Did you that... see Ret Return of the Living Dead? Have you seen it? Oh, it was a long time ago, but I, I don't remember it as much, though. I don't know if I ever finished it, though. Oh, dude. I don't think I ever finished it. I'll have to, I'll have to revisit that one. You should revisit it this month. Wait, but who was that? Was that, um, was that what's her face? Was that Rizzo? From Greece? No. No. No, who that is, wasn't Rizzo. Oh, no, I thought it was Rizzo. It wasn't Greece. Rizzo from Greece. It looks like her a little bit there. You're right. I thought it was a hickey from Kaniki. It's like, oh my God. All right. Number two for me, and I don't know if you know this, but yes, this I really love this movie. I love it. You know Shocker. Oh, sure. Do you know it? Whoa. I do. Wasn't Megadeth on the soundtrack? This, hands down, is one of the most amazing track, uh, amazing uh, soundtracks ever. Yep. Ever in a horror movie. Yeah, Shocker. I, I remember sorry. the soundtrack. Yeah. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Shocker. Uh, um, what, what did we use in um, uh, God Gave Rock and Roll to you? That was off of there, too. I believe. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Dude, so many good movies. And you know who that is? I don't know if you used to watch The X-Files, but that's a dude from The X-Files. I don't remember him now. Mitch Pelegi? I never, I never saw. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, a better I didn't shot. see a lot of the X-Files. Oh, yeah. Dude, such a good movie. I'm sorry. It's a little cheesy. I get it. So good. And the music, when they're chasing, when they're jumping in and out of TVs, and they're he's chasing his son, and it's playing uh, Dangerous Toys, Demon Bells. Dude, that is like oh amazing. Oh my god, to me. I remember Dangerous Toys. Demon bro. Bells, Demon Bells. Are you better? Holy shit, hell? dude. Dude, it was an amazing. I like Dangerous to Toys. Yeah, dude, amazing. Amazing. So it, it's got a special place in my heart, dude. So I, I so I had to put it at number two. And finally, nice. my number one. Hands I down. I watch that, dude. With a caveat. I have to say something about this, though, but is Friday the 13th. Oh. Jason, I dressed as him as a kid. Jason was the shit for me. Um, I, I loved it. I loved I, I just he was just he didn't give a shit. He was like a tank. And the story was good. Oh, he's a big boy who was Kane a hotter. Right. Well, he was the original. He came in later, but. Now what? What my caveat oh, wait, who's is? Who's the original? Who's the original? In the I first don't remember one, his remember? name. The original one was only in the first one, I believe. Then there was a second one in the second one, uh, and then Kane Hodder. I bad believe career came in move three. on his part. Three or four Kane Hodder came in. Again, I'm not a trivia expert on every little detail, but um, but here's my uh, caveat on saying Friday the Thirteenth is my favorite. I still think it's a superior movie, but. When he finally put on the hockey mask is when I really started to love it more. So that's my caveat. Yeah. So I really love part three when he got the hockey mask. But and again, he was only in it for what a, a, a couple seconds. He was in it in the beginning when they were talking about when the kids were making fun of him, and then yeah, that, yeah. the part with that. And that, and this part where he jumps out, that was it. He was really in one. It was his mother. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, it's and that's the other poster on my wall. Friday the Thirteenth. Always been one of my. And you know songs. where you know where that was filmed, right? right? Yeah, in New Jersey. West Milford. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, it Old was. School, bro. 
So that's my number one, and I'm sticking to it. Now, like I've said, like I've said, you know, we're not saying that these are all the superior movies. What we're saying is they meant something to us. They made an impact on us. So if you have other ones that you think should be on a list, and what are your favorites, you can comment below. We're always uh, open to see other people's uh, ideas and thoughts and blah, blah, blah. But that before is... We, be, be, go before on, we go ahead. anywhere, I have an honorable mention because going through all these movies oh, made me think boy. of something. Go for it, dude. Go for it. Did you ever see... Did you ever see... I always love this. Dude, I used to... I love this movie. Did you ever see The First Power with Lou Diamond Phillips? Shut up. Shut your mouth. That, How you know fucking what I, good was that movie? Now, because of you, I have one. You piece of shit. Because of you, we got to go longer. Do you fucking remember? Fucking first power. Fucking, I love that movie so much. Because that dude creeped me the fuck out. Remember he called him I, Buddy Boy? Yeah, Buddy Boy. Hey, Buddy Boy. Buddy Boy. <laughs> Reminds me of See somebody. Around, buddy Boy. And then he jumps off the fucking building. Here's my caveat. And he just, he jumps off the building and then he just lands and he just walks, it like slows down and, and he just walks. walks away. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my caveat. The prophecy with Christopher Walken. I never fucking saw the prophecy. Dude, bro. you just, you're doing yourself a disservice as a human being on this planet. Okay. And one more. Uh, because and now go. that I'm thinking about it. All right. One more. Ex Exorcist three, bro. Three is your favorite? Exorcist 3, and this is weird. This fucked me up. Because I, I liked Exorcist 3 because Brad Dourif played the Gemini killer, and I thought he was such a psycho in that fucking straight jacket it, with uh, George C. Scott. And he's in that straight jacket, and it's just the conversations between them, and he's like talking about how he got the blood out of the vena cava into all those cups without a drop spilt of his friend and like yeah and it was like because his favorite movie was a wonderful life and he writes wonderful with two l's and like remember the fucking the girl the old lady's possessed and she's like crawling on the fucking ceiling so then i thought i was always like man this movie really creeped me the fuck out like i had such an uneasy feeling and remember he had those things to cut your head off those yeah. big like hedge clippers yeah so then come to find out what movie was Jeffrey Dahmer watching that when he was reciting incantations when the one last dude that got away, that fucking nailed his ass to the wall, finally escaped? And we all, I don't know if you've seen Dahmer, but there was a whole lot of times that motherfucker should have been caught way before that. No, but yes. the one guy who got away, what did he say? He was watching Exorcist 3. I'm like, son of a fucking bitch. All right, I'm like, that's why that movie creeped me out. Speaking of son of a bitch, now I have one more caveat, and then we're cutting this off. All right, we got to do it. It's Halloween. So. The original, the omen. The original omen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that, the, the music, that music to this day. Yeah. We want to talk about spooky Absolutely. music. That, that was the thing, but that movie freaked me out as well, dude. Yeah, but, these are uh, these are I guess honorable mentions or something, yes, but yeah, you know, we definitely only got five. Mention. But there's so many, dude. Yeah. There's so many I like. So yeah, many, yeah. even a couple newer ones. But yeah, but I would say those are the ones that are more impactful, maybe to us is a better. Maybe yeah, not yeah. saying our top, maybe more impactful. But that's it for. Let's know if you like it. If you want us to do more horror movies, even outside of October and stuff, because I love horror movies. So you let us know. But that's yeah. it for Tobin's. All right, as always, we're going to end it off with a get real segment. Now, like we promised in the beginning, and thank you, anybody who's made it through all the way, we appreciate it. That we were going to talk about the dreaded C word that we shouldn't mention. On see you next Tuesday. I think that's what most people thought, but actually, it's another word. On this week's get real. Get real.
All right, so the C word being consistency, bro. That C oh, word. Shit. That's the door, the you, stepdaughter of the see you next Tuesday word, because no one likes you it. You can't. No one likes it, dude. In the UK, they say can't, and in Australia, that's it's it's like they teach it in school. It's okay to say. Yeah, it. they basically do. Yeah, it's like with their ABCs. Right. So I found this this little uh, thing. I just grabbed it. I, I thought it simplified it pretty well on how to be more consistent. Now, this can follow not only your exercise and your your um, uh, your nutrition and food and diet and all that. It's anything in your life you want to get better at, you have to be consistent. I don't care what it is. Even if you're failing 90% of the time, if it's your dream and you want to keep going and you love it and you're able, you've got to stay consistent because you never, never know. So, first one. Never. And this is proven. Make one change at a time. It drops dramatically the percentage of success when you do try to change more than one thing at a time. So, not saying yeah. it's not possible. Each thing on top of that makes it less and less more likely you're going to be successful in anything. So, it's better to hit some one thing and hit it freaking hard. And stay consistent at it. And then move on to the next. Eat and exercise in a way you enjoy. Which is going to be, again, I'm going to plug it every time. The new program, my rebalance program, that I'm going to be releasing soon. It's about that. Because if you don't like what you're doing and it's not really part of your goal. And not giving you, a working towards the result that you think is more important than the trainer or other people. You're not going to stick with it. When you know it's important, yeah. you will stick with it. Whether you're forced to or not, whether you're dying, you have a broken leg, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Take action even if you don't want to. I mean, we all do it every day at our job sometimes. We don't always want to go there. You've got to stay consistent. You've got to go to it every day, no matter what. Now, this one, a lot of people have, I have no problem with this. Maybe it's my OCD. Uh, maybe it was the way I was brought up. But plan ahead so you're not you're always prepared. I plan everything. Sure, things happen and you have to roll with it. But I always plan. I plan every. I plan my downtime. I plan my my when I'm going to cook. I plan my all around when I train people because that's the main thing. Everything goes second. That well, besides family. Secondary to any is, is is my job and my my business, so that's what I do. And then whatever after that, but I plan everything. That's how I always am consistently getting my things done. Good, bad, and different, perfect, irrelevant. I'm still being consistent in getting it done. Don't let perfect be yeah, the exactly. enemy of good. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. That's that's another one. Always. Cheer for those little accomplishments, no matter how. If, even if there's so, even if there's a sandwich of crap around something good you did that week, concentrate on that good thing. Concentrate on that good thing and try a little harder the next week. Don't try to be perfect. You're never going to be perfect. Never. Make a mistake and get right back on track. If you think you're never going to screw up, you're delusional. You will always screw up, no matter what. You will screw up. Doesn't matter, but it's what happens after that. As they used to say, do you jump back up on the horse? What do you do? That's what matters. I grabbed one more infographic that's got a couple more on it. So let's go with this first one. If it goes wrong, don't give up. Start again tomorrow. Again, not being perfect. You know, not, not, yeah. not. It's like check in frequently at how you're feeling. If you hate what you're doing, you're not going to last, dude. I don't care. Yeah, that's why bodybuilders and other people sometimes have to tr change up their workouts a little bit and take time off because they need a break. That's why they have off seasons. They work out a little less. They eat a little more. They let their bodies rest. Find the best time of day. There's always time. You just got to find it. Again, I have that quote in my gym about time is a made up thing. If you say you don't have time, that means you don't want it that bad or bad enough. 
there's always time if it's important to you. And that's and people know that time and time again. I'm sure you've seen somebody say, Oh, they don't have money. We made fun of this at a previous po- previous podcast, but people say they don't have money and then you see them take pictures on Facebook where they're out at a, a amusement park or something or they're on vacation. And you're like, But I thought, huh? Oh, you have money I for thought that? you didn't have any money. Money. Yes. Learn from when you things go wrong. Don't dwell on them. Learn from them. Be better next time. Make it part of your regular routine. We said that before. Do a little bit each day, even if it's tiny. Every day you do a little something, it's a win. And people got to understand that more. It's not If your goal isn't to look like a bodybuilder, stop hitting the gym like one. You don't have to. Just hit for what you're – do that little bit every day. That enough that's going to make the change. Stay flexible to change. That's the other thing. And that doesn't mean stretching every muscle in your body every minute. Flexibility also means movement. When a muscle moves in full range of motion and it's happy, it doesn't get tight. When all the muscles around that joint are doing what they're supposed to do, other muscles don't get tight. So don't put a bandage on it. Figure out what the problem is and fix that. Tackle your task when you're in the right mindset. You're having a bad day. You know what? Take the day off. Yeah. If you want to sit and just watch some TV, do that. If that's what you need that day. But again, like the other one said, then you get right back up and start again. You get right back up and start again the next day. But you take that day if you need it. And don't be hard on yourself. And that's the biggest one. And I think that's the one that most of us beat ourselves up about is don't don't be yeah. hard on yourself it's kind of we're constantly kind of doing it all of us really so dude it, it's not that hard to be consistent you just it really helps when you're when you know the right things to do and i think that's a big thing that turns off a lot of people when somebody gives them the wrong diagnosis or the wrong program or the wrong advice or whatever and they're like instead of blaming it on the person they blame it on the exercise or the gym or something like that and then you lose that person a little bit and it's a shame and i saw that firsthand i had a client that went to the gym guy didn't show him the right way to deadlift hurt himself never wanted to do deadlifts again or whatever now he's pulling weight on the deadlift and he loves it because he knows how to do it now and he knows he won't hurt himself. So I, I, I just really think that the biggest thing holding people back from being consistent is having the right information and doing the right stuff for them. And I think once we address that more for people, it's going to change a lot of stuff, dude. And I, I really love to get your input, as always, on this subject before we kind of wrap things up. Yeah, I, I think that... Um we've said it before in previous podcasts also is just that it is about consistency, but consistency doesn't mean perfection. And you have to, you have to get back on, on the, on the wagon sometimes. And you also have to be, listen to your body. You have to listen to like the mindset thing. Also, if you're, if you're not in, if you're not in the right mindset, you have something really bad going on or you have other things you have to take care of or, or whatever. It's just like, you can't just go, to the gym while your brain is somewhere else no, because you don't have a mind mind and muscle connection and the mind muscle connection is important bro it's because so whether important. when you're go if you're just so. going through the motions that's when you get hurt you're just going through the motions not thinking about it you're gonna fucking hurt yourself i've done it a million and a one times and i'll probably do it again when your mind just wanders and you're not really in the moment you have to be in the moment and um, i feel and like i want to one up you on that in the past. real quick i want to one up you and i'm going to let you say more it's not even if you think about it literally sometimes it's called it happens with your glutes a lot it's called gluteal amnesia where your brain will actually forget about muscles they won't even realize yeah. they're there and that's why again is one of the root causes of chronic pain and ouchies when you move is when those muscles aren't firing and your brain isn't telling those muscles to fire for that movement and other muscles are doing things they're really not made to, to be the main mover in, that's when yeah. your body's like, ow, that's not right. Something's not right. Yeah. Again, I want to stress this. Pain is your body's way of telling you there's something wrong. I get Dell in pain, especially when it gets severe. But if you have a little bit of pain, really try to fix the problem 
because the, if you dull the pain, you're going to not know when things go wrong. So you really want to fix the problem. You're just putting your Band-Aid on it. But I'm sorry, bro. Go ahead. Finish up. No, no. I mean, that's that's pretty much all I'm, I have to say. Like, because injuries are, like we said, it's a part of the game as we get older. Um, you know, and they can also hold you back if you're a younger person and you're just starting out. Um, you don't want to be like that, you know, like your client, like you were talking about. You get burned so badly, you never do deadlifts again because you don't know how to do them properly and you're so afraid of throwing your back out. You know, like I did that when I was deadlifting a long time ago. Um, but I, I mean, I had back spasms. I ended up in the fricking emergency room cause I didn't know what else to do. So I didn't never had a spasm in my life. It felt right. like my back was hooked up to a fucking car battery. It was, and it was just yeah. like, somebody was giving me zap. I felt like I was in shocker, Yeah, dude. but it was going right down my fucking left leg. I couldn't put any weight on my left leg. It was miserable, but I was not deadlifting properly. I was just going for heavy, 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 heavy. And not really focusing on form, not really having that mind muscle connection, and th it cost me dearly. Like, and not not just in medical bills. Eventually, I had to go get. Uh, I went to an orthopedist, and he just he shot. He gave me a shot right there, right there at the yeah. table. He, he's just like, "Do you need anything? You know, you want to do it under this anesthesia?" I'm like, "Fuck that, bro! Just numb me up uh, locally and just do it." And Thank God, knock on wood, I've been good ever since. But I don't want to go back there. And trust me, when you have muscle spasms, you do not want that shit in your life. It no, is dude, you miserable. do not. You do not miserable muscle spasms, but dude. And another thing. Oh is, my God, I'm, I'm gonna throw this. I was getting out. electrocuted, literally electrocuted. Yeah, your, your your nervous system was going nuts. I want to throw this out to everyone. Not good. Most people's pain in their backs can be alleviated by just learning how to, to brace properly in your spine. And most people do it wrong. Most people do it. Yeah. Wrong. You never Absolutely. brace in. You always brace out. And people don't realize it. People suck in and think they're bracing by sucking in because they think they're because when you crunch, which is a horrible exercise, when you crunch, you're you're kind of vacuuming up and doing shit like that. Now, yeah. That's not what the spine and those muscles were made for. Those muscles were made to stabilize the spine when you do stupid shit and move around. That's what those muscles are for. Very little regular people train their core for actual stability. And it's been proven that when you work too much core and not enough rest, you'll get back problems. So the crunches, again, in their head, they're doing something good. They're actually hurting themselves. So, again, that's yeah, why yeah. I feel every person needs to figure out their diagnosis for their best exercises and figure out what their body likes works best for them and then be consistent with it dude that's the answer that's the answer and i think absolutely I, i'm gonna lay it out pretty simple for people and i think i got an eye for it i'm not i'm there's plenty of people who know more than me but i really think when it comes to regular old people not athletes nothing like that regular old people that just want to live their life not in pain and move and be able to get off the floor when they're 80 if they fall i think this stuff means more to them than any of that shit. And I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to top myself even more. I don't think anybody who's just going for regular health needs a gym. I don't think you need a gym whatsoever. Period. I don't think you need a gym membership. I think you make a small investment for your home and I'm talking small to get started. You don't need a lot. And you're, you're, you will see amazing things happen to your body. And then you decide from there. You want to start throwing weight around, then maybe you got to go to a gym. But just yeah, to yeah. rebalance yourself and feel better, bro, you don't need it. You don't need it, bro. So, very interesting episode, brother. So that was Get Real. Get Real. It's always so hard, man. We always got such good uh, topics, and we just we start going off on a tangent, and then it's like, and you know, it's uh, like, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that's, I mean, that's really what this is all about, is us kind of going off on a, uh, a on tangents and fucking whatever. So I, I hope you enjoy all that. If you do, please like and subscribe. 
Uh, if you're on uh, anything else, follow. Whatever you're on, do what you got to do to follow us and like us and get the word out and share us. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, as you know, we put out one a week. comes out every Wednesday. So we record a week ahead of time because of our schedule. So that's how it works out for us. So sometimes our stories are a little bit behind, but that's because we kind of recorded. But it was fresh for the week that we recorded. And, um, yeah, we have merch. I just fixed some of my, uh, my uh, personal training business merch. Looks so much better. I still want to buy one. I think I'm going to buy a shirt. I like them. And then uh, we have our podcast shirts, which may be a new one coming out. We don't have a This weekend uh, Bullshit shirt. So maybe we'll make that this week. That's, a, that's definitely a must. Yeah. So that look for that coming soon for the holiday season. So uh, <laughs> yeah, please like us. We're on uh, Rumble, YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching us there, uh, if you just want to listen to us and not look at our faces, or look at our faces and you're on Spotify, we're on Spotify as well, video and just audio. And uh, we're on other podcasting uh, apps as well. Uh, so wherever you want to look at us or hear us, we're out there. It's not we're not hard to find. We'll be at the Stay Real podcast. You'll find us. Uh, our Instagram has all the links, and we do do some fun things on there with some memes and stuff. With uh, trying to bring back the old movies for the youngins, so we make memes out of them, and uh, I think people appreciate. There's some people out there that appreciate some of them. So thank you, those people on Instagram who like it. Uh, I think I said everything I wanted yeah. to say. Please, there's ways you could support us right now, even though we are really nobody. But if you really enjoy us and you want to get money burning in your pocket, you could support us on Spotify. Uh, we have a thing there. You can just write straight out support us on Spotify. Um, I think probably that's the easiest way right now. I think that's the only way we can do it right now. So if you want to go to Spotify, again, those links are all on our Instagram. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, Got to go to my brother for the final words of the podcast. My bro, hit us with those words of wisdom to take us out. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the uh, consistency thing, so I kind of found a nice little quote. I think it's pretty dope. If you are persistent, you will get it. If you are consistent, you will keep it. Hell yeah, I like that, dude. That's Listen, fucking everybody. badass, right? I love it, dude. Remember it, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Peace. See you tomorrow. Bye.